Hello everyone, I am Vijay Gadbe and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to understand how to access the Azure Data Lake storage using the Azure Service Principle. So let us go to the Azure Databricks workspace and understand the same. In previous two videos, we understood how to access the Azure Data Lake storage using the storage access key and the shared access signature. Now in this video, we will access the Azure Data Lake storage account using the service principle. Let us go to Azure portal to see this in practical. So here I am on the Azure portal. First, I will open the Databricks workspace. Go to Azure Databricks. This is the Databricks workspace we have created. Launch the workspace. First, I will check the cluster status. Go to Compute. This is the cluster I have created, cluster 01. It is up and running. Now go to workspace. Users. This is the user. These are the two notebooks that we have created in previous two videos. I'll create one more notebook here. Connect this notebook to cluster. Connecting and cluster is connected. Let us give the name to this notebook. Access Azure Data Lake using Azure Service Principle. First, we will define the steps. Percentage MD. This is the title. Access Azure Data Lake using Azure Service Principle. And these are the steps. First, we will register Azure ID application or you can say service principle. Then we will generate a secret. After that, we will set the Spark config with the app ID and at the end, we have to assign the role storage blob data contributor to data lake. This is the role. Let us start with the step one. Register Azure AD application. I'll open another Azure portal here. Now search here Microsoft Intra ID. This one. Now scroll down. Go to App Registrations. New registration. First, we have to specify the name. I'll give my app, keep all other things as default and register. So this is the app we have created. Under the overview, here we are getting the details. This is the application ID or you can see the client ID. And this is the directory ID or you can see the tenant ID. Let us copy these two IDs. First one is the application ID. I'll create a variable here, client ID, paste, you can say application or client ID, then we have the tenant ID, I'll copy this, tenant ID. So these are the two variables that we have created here client id and tenant id now we have to create one more variable as client secret go to application after that go to manage the manage tab under the manage tab go to certificates and secrets under the client secrets click on new client secret here we have to specify the description and expiry. Let us give the description. Client secret for project 1. You can specify any description accordingly. Expires. These are the options that we can specify. Recommended is 180 days. You can customize it as well. I will go with the default option add 
and here you can see value and the secret id we have to copy the value let us create another variable client secret and that's it now note down an important point here you have to copy the value not the secret id you can see the value only one time if you select another tab from here then you will not able to see the value like this go to certificates and secrets and value is gone so you have to copy the value as soon as it created so these are the three variables that we have created here register azure ad application or service principal step one is completed successfully as well as we have generated a secret this one the client secret now we have to set the spark config i'll open the azure documentation here I'll share the link in the description as well. Connect to Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2 and Blob Storage. Scroll down. Under the Azure Service Principle, we have to copy this code. You can use spark.config.set in notebooks as shown in the following example. I'll copy this code and paste. As of now, the secrets are not required. We will see them in detail in upcoming videos. We require only these five lines. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. Let us specify the details. First we have to specify the storage account name. Let us get the storage account name. Here I am opening another Azure portal. Go to storage accounts. This is the storage account. Gen2 storage 248. Copy the name. Storage account. Five times we have to specify the storage account name. So we specified the storage account name successfully. Then we have to specify the application ID here. That is client ID. Then we have to specify the service credential. That is client secret. And here we have to specify the tenant ID. That is the directory ID. Let us copy this, the tenant ID. We have to specify the tenant ID in curly brackets. And here we have to use the F strings. So here we specified this Spark config. Step 3 is done. Now we have to assign this role to the storage account, storage blob data contributor. Go to storage account, then go to access control, add, add role assignment, search here, blob, storage blob data contributor role, let us confirm storage blob data contributor select this role next assign access to user group or service principal select members now search the application here my app select review plus assign again review plus assign Adding the role assignment here. Added role assignment successfully. 
So we have successfully completed these steps. Registering Azure AD application, generating a secret, setting the Spark config and assigning the role to data lake. This role, storage blob data contributor. Let us specify data like storage so there will not be any confusions. Let us execute these two cells. Here we are defining the variables and this Spark config. I will open another Databricks workspace here so we can copy the code. Go to workspace, users, open the second notebook. This is the notebook from previous video. I will copy this code. Paste. Here we are displaying dbutils.fs.ls and here we are specifying the container name and the storage account name. This is the storage account we have created. Gen2 storage 248. Under the data storage, go to containers. And we have created this container demo. And under this container, we have uploaded this file automobile price data.csv. Let us execute this cell. It will take a bit time to execute. And here we can see the path name of the file size and modification time that means here we are able to successfully access the file from the demo container let us read the data from this file again i'll copy the code here we are using the spark.read method to read the data from this file and this is the data from the file these are the column names and these are the observations. So we have successfully accessed the Azure Data Lake storage using the Azure service principle. And to do that, we have to follow these four steps. Now thank you so much for watching this video. And do not forget to subscribe my YouTube channel.